Welcome to Brampton Focus. It's been one year with a new council, and as tradition would have it, the mayor delivers a State of the City address to the Brampton Board of Trade. Next, we meet Todd Letts, the CEO of the Brampton Board of Trade, and his reaction from a business person's perspective of Madam Mayor Linda Jeffries' State of the City. Then, our last two segments, one-on-one -on -one with Madam Mayor Linda Jeffries, right here on Brampton Focus. Welcome back to Brampton Focus. It's been a year since we've had a new council, and every year it's traditional that the mayor delivers a state of the city. Uh, Madam Mayor Linda Jeffrey, celebrating the first year, uh, went in front of the Brampton Board of Trade, which is the recipient generally of the reports to business and business people in Brampton, and she had an opportunity to deliver that speech uh, just recently. Uh, the Brampton Board of Trade is a good friend of Brampton Focus, and Mr. Todd Letts, who is the CEO, a CEO, former banker, um, economic development uh, uh, executive as one would say. Um, he was there and he was uh, kind enough to join us here today. Mr. Letts, thank you so much uh, for joining us on Brampton Focus. Appreciate your time. Uh, you were there when the mayor delivered her speech. Uh, can you give us an idea of what your thoughts and what your impressions are? Well, I think there's a lot of optimism uh, for Brampton and Brampton's uh, future. We uh, heard from the mayor that uh, she's going to uh, double her efforts for two-way, all-day uh, go. Uh, we have been working with our counterparts in Guelph and Kitchener-Waterloo and know the importance of that to our employers in being able to draw from a larger talent pool. Uh, the Blue Ribbon Panel uh, will be uh, making its uh, submissions and recommendations uh, this year with a decision at the end of the year. That's also very encouraging uh, for uh, more post-secondary education uh, in our community and I understand that uh, the mayor is uh, looking at uh, regional governance reform so that uh, Brampton has more of a voice at the regional table those were all three very positive uh, outcomes of today's uh, session Mr. Letts, uh, the McCarter report was released and one of the recommendations was that the city has to put aside some money for infrastructure and it's been proposed now that there's going to be a 2% infrastructure levy how do you think that's going to affect Bramptonians we also heard from the rankings editor of uh, Money Sense magazine, and property taxes was one of those er four areas, one of four areas where Brampton can do better. There was a 4.9% uh, increase in the uh, city's budget. That's that's more than five times the rate of inflation. We do understand that uh, more infrastructure investment is required, 2% is fine, but they started at a base of two and then another one on top of uh, the two and the two. I think that uh, Brampton Council has to do a much better uh, job at looking at alternative ways of delivering service, looking at ways of doing it more efficiently, looking at uh, uh, stopping uh, so certain services being provided in-house and more being provided by other community groups or partners in the community that can do it better. Uh, I'm happy to hear that uh, there is an alternative service delivery uh, initiative underway at the city, but I would like to see that accelerated and I think it's not going to happen until we get a new CAO. I hope that decision comes very close as well. Uh, you brought up the point about money sense. I mean, there are some good things and some bad things uh, in that report. Uh, let's focus on the improvement point. Uh, what do people and businesses in the city of Brampton need to achieve to increase a better rating by money sense of what Brampton has to offer? Well, this is a very interesting time uh, for Brampton in its history. Uh, we are a unique community in that we are one of Canada's fastest growing. We uh, welcome between 15 and 20,000 new people every year, each year. You take that out over the next 15 years, we're going to have another quarter of a million people here in Brampton. We, uh, that is a great uh, consumer marketplace. This is ranked as one of the top 10 uh, places to do business. But when it comes to livability, and here's one of the paradoxes, we were ranked relatively low, about 154 out of 209 Canadian municipalities for livability. What we need is for council, our community institutions, the Board of Trade to work together on important uh, uh, focused efforts to get higher order transit to our community, 
to preserve employment lands, not have it convert to residential, uh, but ensure that more residents of Brampton can actually find work here within our municipal boundaries. We've got to work on that property tax, bring about efficiencies in our, in our council, and lastly, we've got to invest more in health care. And that's why I'm so optimistic about the future of Brampton, is the opening of Peel Memorial Health in October of this year. The Peel Memorial Centre for Health and Wellness will bring another 500 jobs to our core area and serve our our uh, community much uh, better and faster, and I think it's going to increase our livability rankings too. Well, increased livability and jobs is exactly what we want. Uh, one of the things that the mayor talked about was saying that we are in a mega job zone, uh, where because we are so close to the airport, uh, transportation, um, we are prime for job development. Also with the economy, the lower dollar, what do you see that we can do in Brampton to heighten that and potentially capitalize? Is a lower dollar going to have a positive effect on the folks in Brampton, do you think? This is a wonderful time for our manufacturers to seek out new markets or uh, go deeper into their export markets. We have been doing a lot of work with uh, not only uh, our counterparts in the United States, a great opportunity to sell more to the states now that their economy is recovering, not only China but emerging markets as well in Turkey and Pakistan. Thank goodness for the volunteers of the Board of Trade, the Brampton Board of Trade. They are leveraging the uh, diaspora, the many cultures and languages that we have here in Brampton and I'm sure that's going to show results in terms of uh, better uh, profit and and better more jobs for our community um, uh, through export markets because our Canadian domestic uh, sales are uh, are still forecast to be sluggish for the next few years. Mr. Lutz, thank you very much for your time. Mr. Todd Lutz, CEO of the Brampton Board of Trade. Um, so coming up next, now here's a really good thing. Uh, please stick around. Madam Mayor Linda Jeffrey is going to be here. We're going to do a one-on-one -on -one with the mayor, and we're going to talk about governance. You know how we talked uh, previously about Mississauga's got 11 seats in Peel, Caledon has four, Brampton only has six. We're going to talk about a 2% infrastructure levy, one of the other things that Madam Mayor Jeffrey talked about in her uh, mayor's levy. And finally, we're going to talk about all all day, two day, go right here on Brampton Focus. My name is Michael A. Charbon. Stay tuned. Coming up next, the mayor of Brampton. Don't go away. And welcome back to Brampton Focus. I'm now joined by Madam Mayor Linda Jeffrey. Thank you so much uh, for joining us here on Brampton Focus. As you uh, just uh, heard, uh, Todd Letts had uh, some reaction to uh, your State of the City speech. It's been a year now since you've been in office. Uh, one of the things that was commented on was uh, regional government, governance, as they would say. Uh, Mississauga has 11 seat, Caledon has four. Mississauga has six in today's tax base. Brampton pays so much towards Peel, but we have less of a voice because we don't have the seats. What can we do to rectify that? How can we fix that? Well, I'm glad you raised it because it was the uh, the, the point in my speech that I left uh, our city uh, leaders with to think about. I believe that the numbers have been wrong for more than a decade. They've uh, really hampered Brampton's ability to be a world-class city. So I wanted to raise the issue and put it on the radar of all the people that were at the Board of Trade luncheon to tell them how important it is that they pay attention to this issue. Because 10 years ago, the province of Ontario brought in legislation that I spoke out against then. I voted against it. Minister I, of Municipal Affairs, that's... Well, I, at the time, it was John Garrison brought this forward. Mm. I went and talked to the, prime, uh, the Premier, and I went and talked to the Minister, said it was the wrong thing to do, spoke publicly about it, mm -hmm. voted against it, which I think most people would say was career-limiting to vote against your <laughs> government. But I knew it was to the wrong the thing to do. what the people wanted. I needed to do what was right for Brampton. Right. We're a high growth community and we can't continually be having less say at the table as to where the services, whether it's policing, whether it's garbage, whether it's roads, all of those services are important to a high growth city and they build the quality of life. So, so what I did was raise the issue. Right. We're not being represented by population. So for every person in Caledon, every 11,000 people, they have one representative. In Brampton, it's 80,000 people. So how do we fix that? Like, I mean, what does it take? Um, some would say it, it takes a provincial government that recognizes that there is an inequality and that money is being put in by Brampton into the region of Peel, but they're not getting the, the representation. How do we fix that? What is the next go-to point? 
Well, there's a number of avenues, but right now the the, uh, the region is looking at a facilitation model. Um, I'm not confident facilitation is the route to, to get us there. Uh, so what I raised yesterday was the fact that I'm going to speak to the Premier about it. I'm mm -hmm. going to speak to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing about it because I believe it needs a, uh, a regulation or a new piece of legislation because it doesn't just affect Brampton. It affects all high growth communities and the Mayor of Oakville uh, and other mayors are interested in, in a remedy. So uh, the Premier knows about it. We've talked about it in the past, but I think uh, our businesses need to know that it uh, has a negative impact on us. So you asked, uh, um, and let's go on to another point. Uh, you asked Jim McCarter to do a report. Yep. And one of the things that uh, he recommended was a 2% levy as an infrastructure levy. One of the other things he said in his report, and it's kind of a, it's kind of shocking to some, is two, th two thirds of every dollar that's spent to run the city uh, goes towards salaries and uh, benefits for city staff. You reduced your, you, you reduced your, um, annual income by $50,000. How can we get more money that the taxpayers of Brampton are paying into feeding what Brampton needs to have done than salaries and pensions? And, and then on top of that, now we're looking at a 2% levy on top of our taxes. Like that's serious for someone who's right on the edge. It is serious. I take it seriously, and that's why I asked Jim McCarter to come to the city to give us that advice. Because it, when I arrived a year ago, I was told everything was fine. Everything was good, don't worry, don't panic, everything, we're in great shape, and we got lots of savings. Well, I think what we heard from Jim McCarter is, it's not good, we do have some problems, and when you get a D from Standard & Poor's, or the C.D. Howe Institute, you need to take that seriously. Mm -hmm. And so we have, we've put some measures in place that get us to a better place, and that's what I reported on yesterday to the business crowd, to say, we're headed in the right direction, but we're not there yet. Um, I can't fix what's been ailing Brampton in one year, uh, if you've made a, a number of bad decisions. And really what we've been doing is we've been opening all our doors for bi building houses, but we haven't been opening our doors to attract business. So I'm going to be focusing on foreign direct investment. I'm going to work with the City of Toronto and TO Health and uh, their agencies to find aid places where we can go and visit to attract business, to retain business. Because at the end of the day, if you want your property taxes to go down, you need business taxes to be propping up a city. One, one, one of the other things that Jim McCarter said was that we have to protect land yes. inside of Brampton. Yeah. Not so everything goes to housing. We need manufacturing. We need jobs. We need to have a, a space to build a business. I mean, to some extent, uh, we saw sprawl happening and mm -hmm. people have complained. Uh, what's your tactic? How are we going to attack that? We're going to do a couple of things, but my job yesterday was to provide a vision and just tell people where I think we're going to go and where I think our strengths are. Number one, we have a young population, diverse, well-educated. If you don't find a way to capture and build that community and make it stronger, they're going to leave. So one of them is to attract a university. Another is to bring more transportation into our city. We made a decision about the LRT. By a very slim margin, council said no. That doesn't take away from the fact that we need more regional transportation in and around Brampton. I talked yesterday about the, the strength of the airport and the fact that it is a mega hub for jobs. Yeah. When everybody else in Ontario was losing jobs, area around the airport was building 20,000 jobs. And Mississauga is capitalizing on that because they're working on the hub for the LRT. Yep. And we look at our lower dollar right yep. now. I mean, we're in a prime situation. I mean, uh, Todd Letts commented on that. Mm -hmm. But we need to have a go-forward plan. Yeah, we do. We need to see some results. We do, and we need a council that's engaged in dealing with other municipalities, other uh, uh, states, whether it's the U.S., whether it's uh, Europe. We need to find other partners to bring here. I think we have all the right ingredients, uh, but again, I can't do everything in a year, but what I try to do is give people a, a, a more confident view of what we can achieve. I have great confidence in the city. I know we're going to get there. It's going to take a little time to bring people to the same place that I'm at. Although there, we've got about a minute left. I mean, you have 10 councillors, mm -hmm. some of which are legacy councillors, sure. and there's been a lot of monkey business going on. You look on the uh, Brampton Guardian, you look on some of the social media, uh, you're not getting the support by your council. And I mean, Susan Fennell said that too. Um, there's a whole, there's a whole cabal, if you wish, that are trying to hinder things. Under under a minute, what can we do? Is there one sentence that we can do? I mean, we can't have another election. What can we do to get those councillors in line? You know, I think that there are people that uh, don't uh, said they want change, but yeah. they don't. 
and we're still arguing about things that uh, really caught up all of council in the last term of office. Uh, old lawsuits, old uh, oh. angry uh, issues that, that kind of got people upset. I'm forward looking, I want to make things better, and uh, I'm here to deliver change that the people ask me, so and I got a mandate. When we come back, we're going to talk about all day, two day go, and some people that you met in Ottawa that are going to help Brampton. You're watching Brampton Focus. My name's Michael A. Sherbaugh, here with Madam Mayor Linda Jeffrey, back right after this. Welcome back to Brampton Focus, our final segment here with a one-on-one -on -one with uh, Madam Mayor Linda Jeffrey. Um, when we left, we talked about a, a really cool meeting that you had, as one would say. Uh, you were in Ottawa for FCM, meeting with uh, with all the major mayors yep. uh, from every uh, city across Canada. And you had occasion to meet uh, Minister Sohi and have an appointment with him and uh, Prime Minister Trudeau. And I know from uh, some of the releases that we got, there was some important uh, dialogue that you had with reference to Brampton. So share with us what, uh, what, uh, what was discussed and how we can look forward to some good news uh, for Brampton. So I was up in Ottawa for two days uh, and there's about 19 mayors from across Canada and we had uh, a joint meeting with about six ministers uh, with various portfolios that affect municipalities. Federation of Canadian Municipalities is, is what the, the name of it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all met with the Prime Minister, had an opportunity to talk to him in a private meeting. Uh, he assured us this wasn't the first and only meeting. It's going right. to be an ongoing conversation, which makes me feel really good. And then I had a meeting with Minister Sohi. And why does that matter? Because he's the Minister of Infrastructure, which is what we need in Brampton. Right. So he, well, Particularly uh, with the 2% that's been added on. Oh, yeah. There. We need uh, the infrastructure and we need a partner. Because at the moment, we don't have a partnership with the province yet on, on uh, any LRT, but we want to have partnerships with regards to rail. So that's what he and yeah. I were talking about. But we also talked about... Uh, so our and what's the news? What's the news? So the short-term ask was with regards to sh separating freight from passengers. Right. It's that's the, our problem. It's, in Brampton, it's, it's we're the traffic competing. on the lines, right? We're competing for that line. Right. And, and the passengers are always coming behind the freight. The freight's right. the moneymaker. So that's something we're working on with the province, but we want the feds to get involved because it's CNC. The, the longer term ask was to help, uh, we need assistance with flood mitigation in our downtown. So if you look at a map, our downtown is all blue because it's a, a floodplain. You can't build anything, you can't build uh, high rises, you can't bring businesses, you, you, you can't do anything substantive in our downtown until we mitigate the, the flooding issue. So the city has been working on something for a very long time. In fact, before I left office, we were talking about something called Riverwalk. So if you want to know more about it, there's a picture on your screen right now, but yeah. uh, if you go to Texas, there's something called Riverwalk. Yeah. It's beautiful, lots of restaurants, lots of shops, lots of tourism, very exciting, and they've dealt with an issue with regards to water. But it's a purposeful development. You got development a lemon, to, to, and you make lemonade. Right. Well, it's, it's to take water away in the case of a flood scenario, yep. right? I mean, yeah. And it finds a way for, so it's pedestrian, cycle friendly, and it will help our downtown build its economic base, and it really will help us solve a problem, but we need a large partnership. And uh, when I ta talked to Minister Sohi about Riverwalk and talked about flood mitigation, he didn't really understand what it looked like until I showed him the picture. Right. The picture helps him understand the positive uh, attribute of this project. I think it's something that we as a council have agreed should be something we work on. It's in our strategic plan. We've got a lot of environmental assistance ready to go. So I think this is an issue that we can get into the ground in the next three to five years. So when we look at something which ties everything together, it's a two day, all day go, and unfortunately something to replace what the LRT was supposed to do. Uh, there's been talk of having some type of a connective uh, rail or something to steels because that's as far as Mississauga is going with the LRT. Yeah. There has to be something put in a motion very soon so we don't miss the link again. When, when are we going to have some substantive uh, diagrams, some plans, and, and something that uh, someone's going to be able to say, okay, because that leads to a university, that leads to business, that leads to people traffic. Well, I can't say what's going to happen between Steeles and our downtown because right now council hasn't agreed on the route and they haven't, ex they just haven't agreed. Um, I'm focused on the university, but we haven't got approval for that yet either. So we're working on our economic development plan that we will put together with our partner once that partner is announced. And then we will be going to the province to hopefully get approval 
definitely get approval because we need a university. We and have I to. It, it's part of, I think, our next stage of becoming yeah. a world-class city. So there are lots of moving parts. It's like a chess game. We're moving the parts and we're hoping that we'll make ourselves attractive, but we are attractive. We've got lots of healthcare institutions that are already here, already building, Erin Oak Kids, Peel Memorial, Brampton Civic. Well, That's a lot of investment. About, let's talk about Peel Memorial. I mean, we, we've talked about getting people to Brampton. We've talked about getting business to Brampton. Yep. Uh, we've talked about infrastructure, making things Things work better now when people get sick. Uh, we're about a year away from the first patient, is what I read, uh, being um, yeah. brought into Peel Memorial. What's the update? Are, are there any are there any surprises that we're going to find out? I mean, do we still have the positive outlook? We're going to have something that everybody's going to be proud of. You're laughing because there's always surprises. <laughs> um, I can only think of good surprises. Okay, good. You know, at the end of the day, we've uh, been dreaming and hoping that this uh, facility was going to be. Uh, rebuilt it is it's going to be a state of the art matt anderson gave us an update yesterday at the um, at the board of trade event and i i think we're all excited we can't wait till the doors open he was showing us how it's being mudded and 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 the fixtures are coming in and where the dialysis is going to is going to happen and where surgery is going to happen so i mean at the end of the day this is a day facility mm -hmm. where you can go in get hand, surgery on your hand or your knee or wherever they're whatever they're going to do and then, then you get to go home and I think we're trying to keep people healthier, longer. We have the unfortunate uh, notoriety of being a very high uh, incidence of diabetes in our community. That's not something that, that I'm proud of. That's something we need to find a way to address. And I'm hoping places like Peel Memorial will help us deliver with our university some research yeah. that will help our my residents live longer, not lose their sight, not lose a limb, or have their life prematurely shortened. So that's what I'm trying to do. Try and put all those pieces together, bring all those partners together, and have those positive outcomes. So we've had one year. Um, yeah. It was a tumultual uh, election. You, you came into a, a partially divided council, some of which yeah. uh, are still uh, creating problems, if one would say, and not helping you to move things forward. Um, the Brampton Board of Trade, you got to... C plus, B plus kind of in there. They wanted to see more uh, more tangible results. From the report and from what we've learned, we've got a lot of things pending and a lot of good things with about a minute left. Is there something that we can really hang our hat on? Is there one thing we can hang our hat on uh, about jobs, about transportation, uh, about infrastructure? Is there a development? Can you, can you let us in on that, that hopeful good news that everybody can look forward to? What's going to be the third year um, announcement? <laughs> you know, I think uh, I'm very positive. Uh, I was able to go down to Queen's Park uh, about a week and a half ago and spoke to them about our needs and our desires mm -hmm. for what we need in Brampton to be successful. Uh, a very positive conversation. Um, I know that the province is bringing in their budget early March. So I don't think you have to wait that long. I think there will be something in this provincial budget that will be good for Brampton and recognizes our place and our importance in the region of Peel. And you have friends in the provincial government. Been Brampton there, done has that friends everywhere. We have friends there, in a lot that. of places. So uh, if, if we look at the um, the appointments that uh, you've had, you, you've met uh, the Prime Minister, mm -hmm. you've met the, the uh, Minister Sohi as far as infrastructure, you talked to the Premier, and hopefully we're in good shape, it sounds like that. We're in better place than we've ever been before and the planets are aligned. There there you are. Madam Mayor Linda Jeffrey, thank you so much for being here. Appreciate you taking the time. And to you for watching Brampton Focus. My name is Michael A. Charmo. Visit us on Facebook and please watch us. We appreciate your comments and any shows that you want to do. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.